this is an exhausting day. We have an Xbox event that was announced. We have a Xbox game that may or may not have been delayed. Right now, it's in the rumored stage. I got my own opinions on that. And we have a game that looks like it may never have been in development. And it was exaggerated to the fullest a few months ago. What's going on, you guys? Gaming out here coming to another video today. We're going to be talking about a variety of topics in the industry. First thing I want to really go into is I want to talk about events on Xbox. You guys know when it comes to me, I'm loving the events. I love just just new events in, in general. I love stuff just being announced. I like news when it comes to, to gaming. And, and I feel like the, the chef's kiss is always events. It's always the, the time where you get the most bomb for your buck. You know, the, 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 most, the most money for your buck. Or the time, in this case. Uh, so it does look like Xbox has officially announced their presence at Gamescom. Now look, they've, they've been a little bit more vocal about that in the past. Uh, I wouldn't say this is the first time they've announced it. But this is definitely uh, you know, a nice little little thing. So let's go over here. The countdown to Gamescon has begun. 50 games, theater presentation for Avowed, Indiana Jones, and the Great Circle, and Starfield, Shattered Space. Keep in mind, Shattered Space is a huge DLC that's supposed to be coming out this year. Maybe huge DLC is not the uh, correct term to be using. I don't care. Uh, three days of live broadcast, and they're also bringing back FanFest. You know, let's just go ahead and uh, open this up, and let's read some of this. Uh, so Xbox returns uh, with game co uh, with 50 games. The Xbox booth will include a theater. Uh, it will also, uh, you know, you uh, for those who can't attend, you can check a variety of places that they're going to stream it. Following this year's jam-packed Xbox Game Showcase, we're excited to return to Gamescom and connect with the fans in Cologne, Germany. From August the 21st to the 25th, to show off even more of what Xbox players has in store, the community is what makes gaming uh, and Gamescom it's so special that it would be something for everyone this year. Whether you're on the floor in Cologne or just watching home through a live stream. This year, the Xbox booth will be overflowing with exciting update titles, one-off experiences, and fantastic photo opportunities for games coming to Xbox PC and Game Pass. This holiday and beyond, we're also del uh, delivering three days of broadcast live from the show floor to join up to our amazing community for one uh, for another fan fest. Fan fest, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure a lot of you know, fan fest is pretty much like one of those scenarios where they let the fans, you know, really just enjoy in general. Uh, so that's that's what you're seeing here, and then pretty much here it just goes by what's going to be there, you know, from you know, retold to the Aria History Untold, Diablo 4, that expansion, a new Fallout 76 expansion, an Elder Scrolls expansion, and Towerborn's going to be there. So I assume we'll get some stuff on Towerborn. Now let's talk about overall Gamescom. Gamescom, it's a hype event for me. I remember, maybe I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. Gamescom is when they announced that T Tomb Raider was an exclusive to Xbox, which was a huge time, a huge thing at the time. You know, stuff like that, especially games that was formally announced on other platforms, just being, you know, a deal at the last minute to make it exclusive, was crazy. It was the rise of the Tomb Raider game. And I remember so many people had an issue with that. You know, I do think Fable was announced at Gamescom. Maybe maybe I'm wrong on that. It was, it was one of the Fables that was announced at Gamescom. Fable... Always love love that franchise, but Gamescom, you know, to me, it's coming down to Gamescom is always going to be one of those events. Gamescom's mainly for the community. Now, when it comes to like the June showcase or you know what we used to know as E three, that's kind of for the industry. That's for people to come together to you know get all the media, all the influencers. And all the companies all in one roof. That way it's easier to network. It's easier to get people to look at games that's not been announced. You know, you can get a lot of immediate feedback for these events. That's why when people are saying that these events aren't necessary, I don't think that, you know, they're looking at it from an industry standpoint. They're just looking at it from what they personally want and what they want from the industry. So 
I, I do think when it comes to this, I think I think we're going to get a an Indiana Jones release date. Uh probably a Towerborn release date. And I would say we will get an avowed release date. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about avowed here in a minute, a little bit more in detail, but I do think you guys should be looking out for this Gamescom thing, because I think there's a lot to be said with this Gamescom thing. Uh, but that's pretty much all when it comes to Gamescom. Our second story of the afternoon is the one and only Tom Warren tweeted today, said Microsoft's about to delay Avowed slightly. I'm hearing that Obsidian is about to announce an Avowed delay to early 2025. Now, I'm not going to click this. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to click this. Uh, but you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. Here's the thing. It's disappointing that the game's getting delayed out of 2024. Me, this is the only game I cared about this year. So, you know, that means that 2024 was a little underwhelming in terms of Xbox for me. I do feel like it was a solid year uh, when you take into consideration stuff like Game Pass. Here's the thing when it comes to, like, the Xbox ecosystem that I feel like a lot of, you know, people that only game on other platforms don't understand. Stuff like this is a little bit easier to digest because when you're in Game Pass and you're getting these, you know, games pretty frequently now is everything for everyone no but i will say they do a good job of getting the ones that everyone's going to care about i will say that for the most part when they actually put something in game pass from a month to month there's a game for everyone and i have a hard time being upset over games getting delayed which is probably good if obsidian needs more time let him cook i want the game to be as best as it possibly can be and if that means to give them a little bit more time, so be it. Give them more time. I think it's fantastic with this. I did hear this myself, uh, so I do think it is happening. It is true. I don't think that they're not going to have a release date. I think it's going to be maybe January, February, March. Maybe Marches, because that seems a pretty good date that they usually pick when stuff gets delayed to 2024. I mean 2025. To me, as long as the game comes out good... I don't mind. Now, if it comes out still buggy, then I'll have a little bit of an issue. But if, if Obsidian needs a little bit more time, that Black Rock needs a little bit more time to make sure this game is just just great, I'm all for it, man. It's just, I would like, and this is just my personal opinion, you have a Sonus release date. You kind of said this game was coming out this year multiple times. I don't want to see this at next year's January, uh, you know, direct, because this is in my ideal, have a release date by then. You know, to me, what's important is if you show this at Gamescom, which they've already confirmed it's at Gamescom, the biggest thing you need to make sure you do with this game is to have a street date at the end of that trailer. I don't care if you like, look, we need till January, but you say the street date's in March. Look, this is when it is. January's good, but let's go ahead and just say March just in case Obsidian needs a little bit more time and we don't have to publicly delay this game. To me, you cannot show this game again. Delay this game again. Well, I don't think it's ever been delayed again. But if you come out, you need to just give it a date. Uh, it doesn't have to be... Like like I said, pad that date if you need to. If you think this game's done by January, give it a February or a March release date. I think that makes 2025 have an amazing year. Look, first party-wise... 2024 has been a little bit underwhelming in terms of just Xbox games. But in terms of the gaming industry, I think it's a decent year. And look, it's not last year. And I think us as the community need to do a better job at not comparing every year to 2023. 2023, I've been doing this since 2014. It's by far been the best year since I started covering games. Last year was every year, every month, it felt like something... Like phenomenal was coming out, but you know, under the under the one that annoys me the most, you guys know I'm a huge Destiny fan. And Jason Schreier, well, there's been multiple people that's officially confirmed this, uh, but Jason Schreier is saying just to clear up some rumors flowing around about Destiny Three, it was not canceled because it was never in development. Per people familiar, Bungie did some very early work on a spinoff project called Play Payback. But they canceled that a while ago, and I'm, I'll am i have a story up tomorrow, which is going to be interesting. I'll probably cover that tomorrow. 
I uh, I probably will because you know th- this is something that I personally care about, and I know some of my fan base uh, enjoy this franchise as well. I feel like Destiny Three not being a development is actually worse, and I think the reason that Paul Tassi is saying that is because Destiny is in such a bad place right now; it's not doing good, and the fact that you know they still haven't come out there and, and started development on the Destiny Three makes makes it look really bad. You know, I hate to think this game is is going to fail, but we have no more Destiny 2 expansions, and now it looks like Destiny 3 has been officially canceled. Are they just putting the rest of their money into Marathon and hoping that goes? Because that's what it seems like. They're putting the rest of their money into Marathon and hoping Marathon goes off without a hitch. And I think there's a lot of issues with that. I do. Here's the thing, guys. Sony needs these games as a service stuff. I understand that maybe from Sony's perspective, PlayStation can put their money in different places. But it's like, if you're going to take over the studio, you might as well fund the studio to make two games at the same time. Destiny 3 and Marathon. That way, Marathon's not a huge success the way that Bungie feels you still can fall back on Destiny 3. I think they're setting Bungie up to fail. I personally feel like PlayStation regrets buying them. They bought them with a you know, a vision that's no longer in the in the works. Cause I do think at the time Jim Ryan had different uh you know m- uh, different what's what I'm looking for. He had different goals. He had different ways he wanted to run the company, but clearly they've changed that with the cancellation of like the Spider Man uh games as a service, the cancellation of factions, they've canceled a couple other games. You know, Concord ended up getting getting greenlit and coming out to development that's kind of weird but anyway concord is out there so like when you look at stuff like this it's a little fishy you know i would actually argue that it would make more sense for them to cancel marathon and put all the all the funds into destiny 3 but that's just because i'm a destiny fan and i don't necessarily care too much about marathon maybe i'll try it when it comes out most likely i'll try it when it comes out but i don't really care about the game itself but anyway you know that's it for the topics today it's been a really a chaotic day you know put in the comments below what what do you guys feel about this stuff you know when it comes to gamescom is there any kind of announcements that you expect in there uh you know when it comes to a vow does that being delayed upset you and i i'm very curious to hear you guys' opinion on you know destiny 3 in general do you think this is a playstation move do you think this is a bungee move very very interested to hear to see those responses and read those responses uh if you enjoyed this video definitely hit that like button it's always appreciated you can always sub to the channel for weekly content uh don't forget to follow me on twitter at lord addict ilp and you can also follow my uh my youtube streaming account which is addict arena all that's the description below it's pretty much where i play the games i talk about you know we go into more of a community based on all the topics uh, it's very interesting over there hope you guys enjoy it but anyway until next time this is gaming addict i'm out of here Peace. Guys, this is crazy.